Jim Cramer has been hosting CNBC's hit show Mad Money for almost two decades, a show where he advises people on stock picks, interviews CEOs, and hits sound effect buttons with what I can only describe as the fervor of an erect and rabid primate. Run into the ground! House of pain! You shot the lights out! Bye, 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 bye! I need you to sell that thing right now. That's just good television, folks. Jim Cramer is now more or less synonymous with financial punditry. But while hundreds of thousands of people tune in nightly to hear Cramer's stock picks, his biggest critics are quick to point out that he appears to be wrong all the time. So today, I'm going to go where no journalist has gone before. The bottom of Jim Cramer. Of course, like any journalist, the first move I had to make in telling Jim's story was to contact Big Santa himself. But as a YouTuber and a man with an email from 8th grade, I knew that wasn't going to be easy. My pursuit began with a flurry of messages to CNBC, using all of the carefully worded language I could muster. But the big kahunas over at Broadcast Media weren't having it. So I decided if I couldn't talk to the real Jim Cramer, I'd do the next best thing that any normal and ethical reporter would do if the central interview of their piece fell through. Post a role for a Jim Cramer lookalike online and hire an actor to play him in a sit-down pre-scripted interview with me, Dan Toomey. And after combing through hundreds of applications, I eventually came upon my very own Jim Cramer. But even though I technically didn't have the real Jim, I still wanted everything he said to be as close to the truth as possible. So I wrote our interview almost entirely out of things that Jim Cramer has actually said or written in the last 30 years and have now been taken entirely out of context. <clears throat> Jim Cramer, thank you for joining us. Thank you, I'm Jim Cramer. Jim, I want to start with your obsession with picking stocks. There's nothing within me. I'm just a, a dollar sign represented by a man. Got it. From a young age, Jim Joseph Kramer was ambitious. He had an early fascination with stocks as a child. In fifth grade, while there was wasted time after school playing board games or combat or touch football, I'd be gaming the clothes. Soon this whiz matriculated to Harvard University, where he became the editor-in-chief of the Harvard Crimson, which he parlayed into his first job in the media. Your first gig was at the Tallahassee Democrat, mm -hmm. a newspaper yep. out of Florida. Uh, that must have been fun. It's been a good time. Only a few months after my arrival in Tallahassee, a crazed murderer broke into the sorority house down the block from my apartment. I got there early enough to leapfrog every other crime reporter in the country in the unfolding Ted Bundy national serial killing spree. My reporting on that double murder received so much coverage around the country that editors who wanted hard-boiled crime reportage clamored to offer me jobs. In just a few months, I found myself covering for the Los Angeles Herald Examiner everyone who died violently in California. But despite this thriving media career, Jim just couldn't shake his financial fetish. So he soon turned his higher ed creds, love for stock picking, and hardworking attitude into a job at Goldman Sachs, where he worked before starting his own hedge fund in 1987. And it was running his fund where Jim Cramer got to publicly display the thing he would become most famous for, rage. In 1997, I tried to strangle a young analyst because he had cost me so much money by Parametric, a failing software company. Really? Sounds like you were fun to work with. Oh, you, you made a bargain with the devil if you worked for me. I was that person. It was mental illness, I think, in a lot of ways that made, made it, so I was, I was too angry. And let me tell you, if there's one thing this country likes to do with us mentally ill, screamy fellas, it's to get our tushes on the airwaves. Throughout the 90s, household investment in stocks grew with a ripping bull market. Meanwhile, this scarlet skin stock sodomizer became a common fixture in financial media. Magazines, newspapers, Charlie Rose, even his own website, thestreet.com. He was everywhere. By 2005, he had quit his hedge fund and was now hosting Mad Money, his own show where we finally got to see the big man on Muzzled. Hey, I'm Kramer. The lightning round on Kramer and Mad Money. Hey, first one, CBC, man electrocuted. <laughs> Only the best. They know nothing. Who is Jim Kramer? Please welcome Jim Kramer. Jim Kramer. Please welcome Jim Kramer. The new Stark Industries business plan. 
But despite this success, it wasn't all roses in Kramerica. How did you first come across Jim Kramer in your life? It's probably the same for me as it was for a lot of people. It was the Bear Stearns call. Back during the great financial crisis, Jim came out and said, you know, hey, Bear Stearns is fine. Should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. And then like a day or two later, they went under. Bear Stearns shares are down 90% this morning, and it's not just Bear. Pretty much every single bank is plunging in early trade this morning. And while Kramer has argued that in this clip he was talking about the caller's stock money being held in Bear Stearns rather than Bear Stearns' stock price, it is a bad look when you're the guy screaming Bear Stearns is fine and days later Bear Stearns collapses. And it was this moment that led to Jim Cramer appearing on The Daily Show where he was spit roasted like a wedding hog by former Good Work intern John Stewart. I can't reconcile the brilliance and knowledge that you have of the intricacies of the market with the crazy bull I see you do every night. And in some circles, especially the dark world of financial meme Twitter, Jim Cramer has since become more famous for his stock misses than his makes. Like the time he told Elizabeth Holmes she's the next Steve Jobs. Or when he told us during Bumble's IPO that it was going to be a growth stock only for it to fall 90% since. Or the time he called Sam Bankman Freed the next JP Morgan. Or the time he told viewers to buy Silicon Valley Bank before its collapse. Or when he recommended you buy the stock of Chinese ride hailing company Didi at its IPO shortly before it was fined by regulators and forced to delist. Kramer's picking inaccuracy has become such a widespread joke that CEOs will literally tweet at him not to talk up their companies. And while some have turned Kramer's misses into memes, Others have turned them into money. Namely, King Tuttle here, the creator of the Inverse Kramer ETF, a fund that automatically invests in the opposite of Kramer's stock recommendations. Watching financial media bring Kramer out day after day with deference. You know, hey, we're going to find out what Jim thinks. And zero accountability for bad calls just rubbed me the wrong way. And somebody had to take the other side of it. And sure, this criticism absolutely has real teeth. But it does raise a long-pondered philosophical question, can anybody accurately pick individual stocks and consistently make a profit? There is this perennial kind of question, this search for talent. Is talent real? Like, does talent really exist in terms of stock picking? I have no doubt that it, it, it does exist in people who take a very, very long-term view. I think there is almost no one. I think it's basically impossible to be right in the short run. The corollary to that is, is there such a thing as anti-talent? It's fun to have a product that's poking fun at Jim Cramer, but I don't think that betting against someone who falsely portrays themselves as a stock market genius is a genius move at all. But if you'll lose money following Cramer's trades, and you'll lose money doing the opposite of Cramer's trades, then isn't there anybody out there who can tell me exactly which stocks I need to pick so I will definitely make money? And I've been on CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox, all of them. There's no such thing as a guru. You know, if there was, you know, why would I be out on CNBC telling people what to buy and sell? I'd be on a yacht making my own buy and sell decisions. I'd be very dubious if there is any guru out there who's better than anybody else. There are just people out there who are more entertaining. Study after study shows that it's as bad or worse than a coin flip listening to TV pundits. Not to say that I'm the world's greatest stock picker. That, that's why I don't do well on, on TV is you know, you go in there and they ask you something and you're like, okay, this is probably true, but let me just throw in this caveat. And that's not interesting. That's not, you know, that's not fun to have on TV or radio. Uh, but people who express themselves that way tend to be more thoughtful and more accurate than people who are just from the outset will give you a, a strong, confident answer. That's right. We don't like, um, we don't like nuance. We like assertive confidence. That's what we like. Yeah. Yep. Same reason I hire a dominatrix. So do we really need talking heads at all? It's a tough question for a guy like Kramer, but I wasn't afraid to ask it straight to his face. But what do you say to your biggest critics? We're not going to win you. In the end, this is a commercial product. And the market has judged this commercial product to be worth something. And if it wasn't, I would have been canceled years ago. Why ever talk about individual stocks then? If, if you manage your portfolio well, if you do the homework and stay disciplined, I think you can beat the S&P 500 with, with a diversified group of individual stocks. If you're not going to do homework, 
than own an index fund. And that's perfectly fine. You need to do what is right for you. Yes, we should do what's right for us. And maybe when it comes to Jim Cramer, that means changing our perspective. We have Jim Cramer because he's good TV. We hate Jim Cramer because good TV is extremely not conducive to communicating nuanced financial advice. But maybe for all of his misses, the biggest thing Cramer is wrong about is himself. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people, my friends, I'm just trying to make a little money. Other people, my friends, I'm just trying to make you a little money. Other people, my friends, other people, my friends, other people, my friends, I'm just trying to make you a little money. I'm just trying to make you some money. I'm just trying to make you a little money. I mean, this man isn't an educator first. He's an entertainer first. The market has clearly judged Jim Cramer to be worth something. But maybe to the millions of people who have watched Cramer over the years, his value actually has to do less with money and is really about something closer to friendship. For good work, I'm Dan Toomey. Jim Cramer, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. I am Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. I am Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. I am Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. I am Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. I am Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. I am Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. I am Jim Cramer.